So, we know we're in 1798. Everybody happy with those kind of basic proofs of 1798? So we've got 1798, 1798, 1798. Okay? So, <coughs> then, verse 40, part... The woman. The woman is the church. And if you go through anything in the visions of Daniel, when you have the beast, what does the beast represent? It's the power. No. Power, nation, nation, kingdom, rulers. Yeah. So, 40b says what? Basically, you have to read it. What is 40, 1140, the second part, say? Uh, 1989, isn't it? Okay, 1989. And what's happening in 1989? The king of the... The king of the... Oh. Um, the breakup of the Soviet Union. Okay, but just with the wording of the verses, what happens in the verse, what the word? Don't, just paraphrase. The king of the north comes against the king of the south. So the king of the north comes against the king of the south. Okay. okay? So now we have the king of the north coming against the king of the south. Okay, and who's the king of the south? No. Oh, no, no, no. Um, it's com- it's com- okay, USSR. USSR. Okay, and we had the year 1989. Okay? And we had some further information in the verse. He comes, if you, if you can't read it, I'm writing small. It, 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 40B, King of the North, comes against King of the South. King of the South is the USSR, 1989. Yeah. Okay? Okay, so you've already given the answers, but I've got sidetracked. Ships. Okay, comes with ships. Um, uh, Three things. Horsemen. Chariots. Chariots and horsemen. Okay, the ships represent... Uh, economy. Economic, yeah. economic power. And the chariots and horsemen, which are one thing, um. represent armies or military. Yeah. Okay? And who was this power here? Who was this... The USA. USA, yeah? We're okay with that? Yeah. So this is the USA. So we see that a ship and a chariot and horseman in this setting represents a little country, the United States. We we'll agree with that? Mm-hmm. So that's what we, yeah? We see that a spiritual or a symbolic king of the south, someone who symbolizes Egypt, is a literal country in Europe called France. Mm. Then we see another country that's symbolically represented by Egypt as being represented by the USSR. And we see ships and chariots and horsemen, economic and military power, being represented by a country, the United States. Symbol, 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 Literal country, literal country, literal country. We see symbols representing literal countries. Or spiritual entities representing literal countries. Are we okay with that? Good. What is that yell there? Okay. Uh, I'm going to point down, you tell me when to stop. You're right. Yeah? 40B, mm-hmm. King of the North, mm-hmm. comes against the King of the South. Okay. King of the South mm-hmm. is the USSR. Mm-hmm. That happens in 1989. And how does he come against the USSR? With ships, chariots and horsemen. Mm-hmm. The ships is economic power, chariots and horsemen is military power. Mm-hmm. And this economic and military strength is representing the United States when Reagan and uh, John Paul II went into a secret alliance. <coughs> how do we do now the transformation from France to the USSR? How does the USSR become <coughs> the king of the South? Is it because of the belief... Okay, so we didn't tackle that, but the two ways to tackle it is historically and I'll, I'll say spiritually or prophetically. It, the USSR is going to take the two um, characteristics that France had, which is sodomy and uh, atheism. Okay, Sodom and Egypt. So it'll take those characteristics, so on a prophetic level you can see that that's what it's doing, the way it's structured, the way its government runs. I didn't see the USSR characterised in that way. I mean, atheism... Okay, atheism is very, very strong. I didn't see that. Okay. Yes, in communism, in atheism, it's like... Mm. Not just sodomy, though. I've, atheism, yeah, I've seen that part. Uh-huh. Uh, I've seen that. What was, you know... Um, Typical of France, I didn't see I think what, what you would do is, if you don't see, and I think we discussed this, if you go into Great Controversy and s- read the chapter of um, the French Revolution, and you see 
why it's being represented as Sodom. Because it's, it's not just about homosexuality per se as we would think about it. Okay? Because homosexuality, homosexuality wasn't, wasn't rife uh, you know, in the French Revolution. It, it's not particularly known for that. Um, but it was known for licentiousness. Um, and the other way, of, the way, other way of understanding it is that 1798, the French Revolution began a wave of revolutions that swept through Europe, literally, it swept right through Europe, and you can just go onto Wikipedia and you can type in uh, European revolutions or something along those kind of keywords, and they, they have names, they, it's well documented history, and they, and they kind of break it down into like periods of time. And you see this progression eastward, and it ends in the Bolshevik Revolution of 1917. Okay, so you can see it laid out in history, um, as well as the prophetic, char- prophetic characteristics. So I'm not suggesting that it's so much homosexuality, but it's the whole issue of licentiousness. And if you see how it, was, how it panned out in the French Revolution, you'll see that's how it panned out in uh, the USSR. Now what we've found, uh, and what we will find, is that all of this history here is not in the two uh, structures of, of Revelation. It, it's just not, it's not there. Okay? It's, it's blank. Okay? So this was verse 40, and then we had verse 41, which was the glorious land. And there's much of the verse which we didn't tackle at all, and we haven't. So we're just going to call that the glorious land. And then verse 42 was Egypt. Okay? And then what else did we discuss after that? Message. Okay, so if we go to verse 43, what happens in verse 43? Once the king of the north gets Egypt, first he gets the glorious land, which I hope we... Do we all agree that he gets the glorious land? Even if we don't agree what the glorious land is? Yes. Yeah? And do we agree in verse 42, he gets Egypt? even if we don't understand what Egypt is. Do we all agree with that? So he takes the USSR, he takes the glorious land, and he takes Egypt. Then what happens? As you're thinking about that, I want to ask you a question. Verse 41, it says... He shall enter also into the glorious land. Okay, so I want to pick up on this term also. Okay. So, the point that's being made here is what he did in verse 40, he swept away the USSR. He's going he's gonna to do a similar thing to the glorious land because he says he's also going to enter into the glorious land. And then in verse 42 it says, He shall stretch forth his hand also upon the countries. The land of Egypt shall not escape. So, whatever he did in the USSR, he's going to do a similar thing, in a similar way, with similar principles and concepts, in the glorious land and Egypt. The verses clearly say that, when you see this term, also. He did this, and he's also going to do it to this one, and he's also going to do it to that one. So, I just want us to observe that. I'm not going to make great play of that. So I, sort of, I just want to identify there's, there's this thing also. He does it to this one, then he also does it to this one, and he also does it to Egypt. And w- let me ask you a question. We're not sure what the, what the future holds for us, you know, in detail. Yeah? Okay, so um, it's not a trick question. So let me ask you a question. Is the USSR ever going to reform? No. No? No. You couldn't tell? No, just off the top of my head. I'll say no, but... Okay, um, well, 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 let's think about it then. 12.1. What happens in 12.1? Daniel 12.1. Michael stands up. So Michael stands up. Is that, is that, the, is that the end? That is Nothing can happen much past that. Yes. Okay. So, if nothing happens much past that, 
from verse 40 to 45, do you ever see no. King of the South coming up? No. Okay, so if the King of the South is the USSR and you're confident of that, what can you boldly say based upon the Word of God, mm. not what you see? Because if you look in the newspaper in the world, USSR is on the rise, or Russia is at least. It's strengthening itself significantly. Yeah? Because it's, re- it's diverting now its, all that uh, gas and oil money, not into its military strength, but it's in its economic strength. It's becoming a really powerful voice in the world. And if you were to look around, you might be tempted to think, hey, maybe the USSR stroke Russia is going to rise up again. You could be tempted to think that. But if you're confident that this is correct, you should be confidently telling people that the USSR is out of the scene. Mm. It's not gonna it's not gonna rise up. Yeah. However you think it's gonna what things are happening. Because America's looking down now and the ruble's looking good. Mm. Yeah? You've seen you've heard is it called BRICS? Heard of BRICS? Uh, it's um, Russia and India and China mm. and I yeah. think uh, Brazil. Is it Brazil? I think, and, they, and it's, there's this alliance that's forming, kind of like NATO, but not in a military sense. What's it's, the B stand for then? Um, I think it's Brazil. Oh, Brazil, okay. Brazil, Russia, <coughs> India, China, and I can't, and I can't, it, it may be Korea. Um, or it might just be Brick, I don't know. <laughs> Bricks. Oh, Korea, I a- anyway. Um, so, so the point is, the Russia, who was the, who was the USSR basically, besides the satellite countries that he owned, was a military and economic power, okay, and now it, it got destroyed, everybody re- recognised that, but it looks like it's on the rise again and America looks like it's going down the tube. If you read the newspapers, it looks like it hasn't got any hope, yeah? But prophecy teaches us otherwise, and that's the point of understanding this, because if you don't diligently study the Word, you're not going to know and be confident about what's happening and what the future holds. Because you might be tempted now to start investing in Russia or doing something, you know, or shifting your eye away of where the problem is. Many people are in, the, in the church are looking to China, because China's rising. Yeah? And they're going to look for red dragons and all this kind of stuff, and try and make some dual application, maybe it's China, who knows what's happening, okay? But because they get off the platform of truth. So you, the point I'm trying to make is here, you see from verse 40 to Daniel 12.1, which is the end of, kind of Earth's history in the sense of these nations, the USSR never rises again. Whatever you see today. And, and that's how we're supposed to use this prophetic chart, this map, to base our faith upon when everybody around you, including your brethren, are running around not knowing their left hand from their right hand. And it's only when there are brethren in the church who have a stable platform that they're standing on and have a clear voice, a clear message that says, no, this is the way walking in it, and you can only do that, you can only give the trumpet a certain sound when you know from a certainty that the scriptures teach something. Otherwise, you say like you said a minute ago, well, I'm not sure really, it might do, who knows, who can tell? Because that's how we teach prophecy nowadays. And, we, and we, there's a statement in, that James White wrote, and I think some of you, you, you probably know it. He says you have to be careful when you're talking about future history, because who knows, you could be wrong. Because <laughs> they were wrong so many times in, in their history. He gets very cautious and he gets gun shy. Because it's not based upon prophecy. So anyway, so the point I'm making is that when this one gets taken down in the same way this gets taken down, it never rises again. And the same with Egypt. So what happened in verse 43, quickly? Sorry, Egypt, yeah. is, it, is it literal or spiritual? Okay, it's... King of the South is a spiritual representation of something that's literal. In the North is a, lit, is a spiritual symbol of representation of something that's literal. The papacy lives in Rome, mm. Vatican City, everything. Country. Um, the King of the South... Uh, symbol of a literal country. Ships, chariots and horses, symbols of a literal country. The glorious land will follow the same pattern. It's a, si- uh, a, a symbol or, of something that's literal. A spiritual entity that represents something literal. And so will Egypt be. It's a symbol of something that's literal. It's not the literal country of Egypt. Okay? It's not a literal country of Egypt, but it represents something that's literal. 
because it's it's using exactly the same rules of prophetic interpretation. Does that answer your question? So where, what, what will it be then? Okay, so we're going to line it up and hopefully see what we can deduce what it's going to be. Because that's what the argument is. People argue about Daniel and they say, well, you don't know because you're guessing. And I'm just trying to show you by using this technique that you're not guessing. It looks like people say you're guessing, but when you show them, you say, this sequence is exactly the same. It's not guesswork. It's not guesswork to know who Egypt is. And that's, that's without going into Egypt and doing a, a, a word study on the word Egypt. Because you can do a word study, you can go to Spirit Prophecy and the Bible, and you'll see what, re- what Egypt represents just with the word study. If you typed in Egypt, go into the books of Jeremiah or Isaiah, and it will tell you really simply, I could just give you the verse now, and, you, and you'll say, okay, Egypt, we know what it is. But, m- but most people are intellectually accepting of that, but they don't like the consequences of it. So people end up backing away and saying, actually, they really don't know what Egypt is. Sorry. I think sometimes we get mixed up, and, and, I, and I have done, where you can see that it does mean something literal at one point, but then you're not sure when it stops being literal. Mm. For example, Daniel 11 verse 16. <clears throat> To me, that is not literal, but someone has said to me, and I have doubted, so I need to go back and study that it is not literal. Do you understand what I'm saying? Someone said it's literal. 1116? Where it talks about the glorious land. Yeah. It's literal. Yeah. It's a, it's a, it's, it's... So that was literal, but then later on, it's yeah. now using the literal to make it spiritual. And a really simple one, where people say, oh, you're breaking your own rules, is that before the cross, it's local and literal. When it says Egypt, it means literally the country of Egypt. After the cross, it's symbolic, spiritual, worldwide. So it's a really simple black and white. When you say after the cross, are you saying what was after the cross, or are you talking about after AD thirty one? You know that kind of time, that kind of time frame. You, you're talking really about things that are symbolic. And, and they're not literal. So after the cross, when you hear things like the, uh, like Egypt in prophetic history, right. it's not literal Egypt. It's some kind of symbol of Egypt or something that's symbolised by what Egypt represents. If, if, yes, Egypt had characteristics. Literally, you pick up those characteristics and you apply them to somebody. That's what it's doing. You're applying those characteristics. You say, okay, it's 19... 1921, 1921 is a significant date, and you say, let me find someone who looks like Egypt, and you say, oh, it's Somalia. That's, how, that's what you're doing, because Somalia's got these characteristics, and it doesn't really, that's just a, a silly example. Okay, that's, that's, that's what we're doing. Okay, that's what everybody does, except when they start warring against this, and they start doing something different. It, 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 you'll, and you'll see it, when you, when, when, when you talk to people about, if you, if, I'm, I'm not saying you're going to accept all this straight away, but if you start talking to people about this, they'll start backing away from standard Adventist rules of prophetic interpretation. A symbol represents something literal. And, and you know very well that everybody who argues against the glorious land says you can't make the glorious land a literal country because you're breaking the rules of prophetic interpretation. In the verse before, they teach the very same thing, the very same rule. That the king of the south is literally France. It's a literal country. They, they, they all do that. But when it comes to this one, they, they, they break the rules. But they twist it around and say that, you know, I'm breaking the rules, or whoever's given the glorious language. Okay, verse 43. What happens in verse 43? power over the treasures of gold and silver. Okay, so verse 43, uh, the king of the south has got everything. Okay? And everything includes two things. What are the two things that he's got in verse 43? We don't have to... So, so we're just going through, you know, a person who doesn't know what the verses mean, but you can just read it and it's, and it's, and it's obvious. This is, this is intuitive reason. The king of the north, yeah? The king of the north has, has entered into Egypt, but when he's done that... Oh, sorry, sorry. Oh. I was thinking he entered into Egypt. It's king of the north. Okay, he's got everything. So what has he got in verse 43? What, is it, what does it say he's got? Okay, so gold and silver. What is gold and silver? Money. Money. And what is money? 
Economic. Economic power. Okay, so he's got gold, um, and I'm going to put that as economic. Okay? King of the North, he's got everything. So the everything is two things. He's got the economy, but what else has he got? Church. You can just read the words. Okay, so he's got the Libyans and the Ethiopians. So he's got the Libyans and Ethiopians. So we don't have to do a detailed analysis of what the Libyans and Ethiopians represent, okay? But they're going to represent what? Even countries. Okay, they're going to represent countries because the Libyans and Ethiopians were countries. Mm. I mean, they used to be countries, so they're going to represent a country. Mm. Yeah? Okay. And so you can. It may or may not be literal Libya, is that what you're saying? Oh, it definitely won't be literal Libya. It definitely will not be because you'd be breaking your own rules. But it will be definitely literal countries. There'll be countries. So when you go back and study what the Libyans represent, okay, okay the Libyans represent poor people. Okay, so it's no Let me finish. Yeah. And the Ethiopians, no, this is literally, if you go back in the scriptures, it talks about the Libyans and what Libyan was like. It, they were a poor country. Yeah. Okay? okay? So Libya represents poor, and the Ethiopians were rich. Okay? okay? So you have rich and poor yeah, so countries. Okay. okay, so what is this world divided in today? So, what do we call them? First world, third world, okay? So we all know this, so you're talking about, he's got everything. He's got the first world countries and the third world countries. He's got everything, because he said everything. If you also look in the scriptures, we haven't done this, but I'm just laying this out, you'll see that both the Libyans and the Ethiopians were warring countries. It talks about their warring and their fighting over and over again. So you see that he's got economic power, and he's got military power, okay? Because the Libyans and the Ethiopians represent not only the poor countries and the rich countries, it represents all of the world, all of its military strength. So it's not a coincidence that he started with economic and military power in verse 40, and he ends with economic and military power. How can chariots and horsemen suddenly now be all kind of well, oh no, but it's it's not it's not chariot it's not chariots and horsemen because it's it's Libyans and Ethiopians. Yeah, but just because they used to fight, what makes it, how do you apply that to him now having their fighting prowess? Do you know what I mean? Okay, because that's where you have to ask yourself the question: Why did he not use the men of the east? Yeah. Why did he use Ethiopians? Why did he use Libyans? What you're required to do is do a word study on Libya, on the Libyans. Um, same with Ethiopia, and see what the characteristics of, the, of they are, of those those nations are. When you see those characteristics, then you're required to sift through them and make them. Okay. Uh, making maybe is not the right way of saying it. To see how apply them to this setting and see well, what what relevance is, does that have on it? Okay. Well, Anthony, what's the significance of putting Libya and Ethiopia in the text for there? What is, what is the significance of that? And likewise, we, 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 there's, there's a reason why it's been put there. Yeah. So, the question is, so what, is what's the reason? Mm. Do you know what I mean? So, you, as you said, you need to... I see that you need to study that out and, and get, get, get the meat from, uh, from the word concerning that. Good question. Yeah, I was, I'm, I'm thinking, um, and I need to study, but I'm thinking also that it could be that he's, um, they're instrumental, they're beneficial to his cause. So, because I'm thinking, how can you use them if they're poor? How can, they don't, they no longer have their military strength if they're poor, right? You can't, you know, can't, an army can't fight if they're poor, right? So, I'm thinking maybe he's using their military or their um, conflicts into, you know, like, um, we call in country, country conflict. Civil. Civil, yeah, yeah. Like the same level of their own country to his own game. Yeah. That's yeah. how I'm now thinking. Okay. It's helping his cause. Yeah. However, we however we can we want to visualise what because you're talking about why they're doing it yeah. or how. How are they beneficial to his cause? You know, how could they? If, if he's not using them 
If he's not specifically using them as an army, then how how is their military strength helping him? Do you know what I mean? If they're poor, so I'm thinking it has to be that they're tearing themselves apart is helping him. He's using that as an army. Okay, so if you want to know how they do it or why, the hows and whys of anything, you do what David suggested. The other thing you do is what I said right at the beginning, when you see how structure works, Okay, if you see this structure lining up in Revelation 13 and 17, and you see something similar happening, okay, you'll have three testimonies, one, two, three, and so you won't have one story, you'll have three separate stories of what they're doing, and you'll get a broader picture. You'll see glimpses of, of the whys and wherefores, of why that's happening. So that's verse, does that make sense? Yeah. Verse 43. 44? What do you say about verse 44? What's the, what's the, what's the, what's the, the thing about verse 44? It's the free angels message, isn't it? Okay. What do you want to read? No, don't read it. Sorry? Uh, military. Who? Military. Okay. Economic and military. The same thing we had, economic and military. And if you, uh, let's just go back to it. If you've got everything, what is, you know, if I said I've got everything, what, what would that include, what would that mean? You've got the... The world. You've got the world, yeah? So, so you can quickly see that here it was the United States, and we know that because we can go back in history and see it. Okay, now we're into future history, but it says everything. So, you know, very quickly you can see just by deduction, you know, common sense. If you've got everything, I mean, it's everything. So you can see this represents the world. I'm going to put that in quotation marks, okay? Because I'm not saying it's a proof, okay? But if it's everything, what did? Where did all of this? What is it everything of? If it is not a good way of saying it. it. He says he's got everything of whose? Whose thing did he have? Everything of the people. No, but in, the, in, the, in the wording of, he's got everything of what? Whose things has he just grabbed hold of? The rich and poor. No. The king of the, he didn't say the king of the south though. He didn't say the king of the south. Who's, who's everything that has he got? He didn't say. He didn't say. He didn't say. Um, read the, let's read the verse. In. No, the glorious land was the verse before. But he shall have power over the treasures of gold and silver, and over the precious things of Egypt and the Libyans and the. Okay. So, who's everything has he got? Who's everything? Who, you know the everything. It says everything of who? Who did this belong to? In the verse, it says. And she'll over all the precious things of Egypt. Of Egypt. So it's Egypt's things. Egypt. So it's Egypt's things he's got. So he's got everything, and everything is representing the world. So you can quickly see that what is Egypt representing? Represents the world. So, so this is not a proof, but you see clues already coming up. But you can see that this here is representing the world, and I put in quotation marks because it's not a proof, but you can quickly begin to see that everything belongs to him, and everything was Egypt's. And so you begin to see that they we're cracking into this code now, that maybe Egypt represents the world. So what should we say upon the countries and the land of Egypt? I'm going to, I'm not going to, this is not a proof, okay? But I'm going to simply say, if you go to verse 40, who does verse 40 represent? France. Yeah, South, French, South. Okay, uh, verse, uh, oh, sorry, I, I, I gave you, there was too much there. It says, um, And you come against him like a world with Harrison with horsemen and with many ships, and he shall enter into the Country. countries, plural, and shall overflow and pass over. So who do those countries represent in verse 40? Poland, Slovakia, Romania, yeah, Turkmenistan, Turkmenistan. It represents all those satellite nations. He's going to go there and he's going to rip that alliance, that confederacy apart. Right. Yeah. Okay. So if you can see that the world is here, okay, and I'm giving it's not a proof. You'd expect to see the first world countries, the third world countries. So these would be countries, you know, in the plural. Yeah. So that's why he's talking about these nations. Yeah the Libyans and the Ethiopians, okay? You'll notice that Libya 
is a single country and Ethiopia is a single country but it says Libyans and Ethiopians now you might want to make them into just the people of Libya or the people of Ethiopia or you might see that the Libyans represent third world countries because it's plural and Ethiopians represent plural first world countries but that's the, I'm not proving that but it's, it is in there to see verse 44 Natasha told us there's a message okay mm-hmm. and you said it was the three angels message okay the three angels message three angels message okay if you give me the liberty I want to say it's the third angels message okay mm. if we agree this is future Mm. Yeah, do we agree this is future? Verse 44 from us in 2011. Mm. So if it's future from. So that's what? No, third angel's message. Okay, yeah. because the third angel's message is the, is the Sabbath mm. Sunday law issue. Okay, and that's what our focus is going to be, which is the third angel's message. Yeah? But I'll put three angel's messages. Okay, and it says tidings. You know it's a message because it's tidings out of the east and the north. And, the north. and what do we say the east and the north represent? Um, good tidings. Yeah, yeah, coming from like you know from from God basically. Yeah. Because um, you, know, you know when you look at it, you know Jesus said that it's light comes from the east to the west, so it's coming up the son of man. Be um, that you, you know when you look at the east, you know that um, some some in the east. Yeah, and that's kind of the sanctuary. Yeah. The sanctuary. Yeah. Um, they come in with the door. There's right. sun rising behind them in the east. That's right. So the door is on the east. So they're coming from the east mm. and they're going to the west. So can I put righteousness? Yeah. yeah. Righteousness. And you can put, I'll put, I'll put Jesus. Okay? Yeah. He shall arise in your heart. The day spring shall arise in your heart, yeah? yeah? So this is a message of righteousness. And the north? Yeah. What does the north represent? The throne. Throne? Word of, Word of God. Any other thoughts? When God wants to do something, who does he, where, where does that, when he wants to punish people, where does he, where does he, these people come from? From the north. From the north. King of the north. The north is right there. King of the north. He's all the way through these verses. Mm-hmm. So the issue of the north is a messy, who is the king of the north? Babylon, king of Babylon. Where does he come from? From the north country. Mm-hmm. He comes to punish people who are disobedient. This message of the North is a message of judgment. Okay? Isn't the third angel's message a message of judgment? Mm-hmm. Yeah? In fact, the three angel's message is a message, that, that's the whole point. The judgment is here. It's a message of judgment. Funnily enough, people who oppose this message say that salvation only occurs through righteousness. There is no judgment message that's associated with it. Yet in the scriptures, it's, it, this issue of judgment comes up over and over and over again. We have a message, and it's the third angel's message, and this message in the very wording says it's the message or tidings of the east and the north. Message of righteousness, a message of judgment. If you accept Sabbath, what are you going to receive? Seal. Seal. His righteousness. Mm -hmm. If you fail, judgment. Judgment. We read read a passage at church, uh, just gone, and it was something like this. Um, It said, if you're on the right side of this controversy, look forward to the to the daytime, because the day's going to rise up. And he says, if you're on the wrong side of this controversy, you want to be worried because the night's coming. Mm. And it's, the, it's this darkness that's going to come upon you. Mm. Yeah? So if you, you, if, you, if you reject the message of the Sabbath, judgment is headed your way. If you accept, you will, you will not only receive, but you will exhibit righteousness. That's what the 144,000 do. Okay? Is everybody okay with that? Are you okay with that, Junior? Because this is just recap, yeah? 
I w- can I add something in? This is this is not part of the thing, but it's kind of like a, a little tidbit, a spiritual thing. Okay. Uh, this is okay. This is out. This is this is not part of this study, but I'm going to add something. Okay. Don't let this confuse you from what we've done. I'm just going to add this bit here, then go back to the study. Okay. We said the east and the north is going to trouble him. Okay. East is righteousness, north is judgment. I'm not trying to back away from that. Okay, that is that, that is the main point. But I just want to show this, just kind of, you know, you like, not dual applications, I'm not agreeing with that, mm-hmm. but um, just some extra depth. Mm-hmm. Let me give some extra depth. Mm-hmm. In the church today, mm-hmm. what is the controversy over Daniel 11, 40 to 45? What, why are people arguing against it? Let me ask for a last question. Are people fighting this message? Yeah. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. Okay. Have you ever wondered why they're fighting this message? Mm. Yeah. Okay. What is this message teaching? Mm. You know, besides the issue of the glory stand and the technicalities of who Eden Moab and all but what's he teaching? It's about it's it's like um, giving you a marker. It's giving you a marker to say what? You know, like he is, he is, he is, he is, yeah. Get ready. So it says, from 1989, you better get ready. Mm. We're 22 years past 1989. We're saying Jesus is about to come with a certainty, with a trumpet that's got a certain sound. Okay? And what would you expect the church to be if, you, if they all knew that? Mm. Shouldn't we be joyful? Mm. So why is everybody rising up in opposition to this message? That's what I thought. I thought it was because they just didn't understand. Okay. I don't think it's just um, people crying crisis when there isn't a crisis. Okay. So there's very, you know, we we could. Because we are falling away from the truth because we just become comfortable now. We are joining all the other churches and they don't want no. They they don't want the church to stand out as it's supposed to stand out because we're supposed to be peculiar people. We don't want to be peculiar. All I'm going to say. All I'm going to say on this, huh? Yes, they're trying to push that second coming back. It's going to push it back out of the way. Yeah. Okay. What does it say in verse 44? Let's read verse 44, because I want us to pick something up. It disturbs. That's you, you, you yeah. It doesn't, it, 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 troubles. it troubles him. Yeah, okay, troubles. let me ask you a question. Is this church, God's church, <laughs> troubled by this message? Shouldn't. Is it? It is, it is. It shouldn't be, but is it? A few people are, yeah. Okay, so this is kind of like a this is like a spiritual sermonette, if you like. This is not part of the study. This church is troubled by this message, and this message is about what the King of the North is doing. Okay. So why is it troubling the church? Why is it troubling the church? Why is it troubling the church when we're telling the we're telling it what it's doing? Okay. I don't think it troubles the church. Because you're going to tell me who the church is. (laughs) (laughs) Tell us who the church is. You see, it it shouldn't drop the church. You know what I'm saying? But the question is, who is it troubling in the the church? Okay. Let me just say this one thing I'm not going to say. You lot was laughing. What happened? I didn't get that. (laughs) (laughs) Because we're thinking the king of the north is the only one that should be troubled. So why is it troubling the church? If... Indeed, it is the church. So there's a sifting, oh, oh, right? Oh, there's a remnant. Again, it's like what we're thinking: the remnant within the remnant. That it, it won't be troubling. Those who are That's embracing cool. it have not been troubled, but those who have been troubled by it, <laughs> they're marking themselves. Yeah. Okay. Marking themselves as Babylon. No, 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 no. Babylon. Not Babylon. The, the, the king of the north is a Babylon. He is. 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 you is. He is. He is. He is. He is. He is. He you He is. He is. you is. He is. He is. He is. are you He is. He is. you is. He is. He is. He is. He is. <coughs> yeah, but wouldn't that, wouldn't that just be likened to the sifting? Yeah, that's right. That's right. It shouldn't, from the at the end of the day, the word of God shouldn't trouble you, it shouldn't trouble me. Why? And because we're part of the church. Yeah, but at that point, I mean, before Michael stands, there's going to be a sifting, isn't there? Yeah. 
Yeah, and that's 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 what it is. Because no, if, right. if it troubles you, right. if it troubles you, and it, it troubles you in the direction like the Pharisees, because mm. the Pharisees what were they? Yeah. They were the mm. church, weren't they? Mm. The Pharisees were the church, yeah. or the leaders of the church. But what they were teaching wasn't in accordance with what what Christ was teaching. So they were tears. So okay. that's why so, that's what you mean? Is that what you mean? I d- that's what, I, I don't want to identify anybody, okay, but I'm just going to show you something that I've seen in these words. This is, this is not, I'm, going to like, I'm going to apply it in a different way. Okay. <clears throat> there are three things that people attack on this message. Three things. The glorious land, which we're tackling. Everybody knows the second one. Everybody knows this one. Twenty-five twenty. Everybody, nobody likes the twenty-five twenty. Okay, because it identifies God's people. But I won't say anything more of that. The third thing that people don't like about this message, we discussed two weeks ago at Sister Mooring's house, was Islam. There is no one in this church. Virtually, no. <clears throat> Who's teaching that Islam is a part of end time prophecy? They don't teach it. Would you think, from your interactions with people, that these are the three things that people home in on: the glorious land, twenty-five twenty, and Islam, or the woes, the third woe? Nobody likes that. <clears throat> Islam. Let me ask you this question: Islam 